Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Doug Evans. Doug is a former co-founder of Organic Avenue and founder of Juicero. He's also the pioneer of, oops, <laughs> of sprouting, of the sprouting movement. He has been channeling the power of sprouts and his transformative plans into the sprouts book or the sprout book and advising tens of thousands of people on the ancient wisdom of sprouts as a food source. Currently living in the California desert, he is sprouting daily, growing a majority of his food in his own countertop garden and he is creating a radical shift in wellness through his discussion of growing sprouts and their healing benefits wow that's so interesting all right well welcome to the show doug thank you so much for having me sheila i i really appreciate you and taking the initiative to make this happen all right and one of the first questions i like to ask my guests is see now this show came about Based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And I wrote that book and it came out and then the pandemic hit. And we have been hit basically with just about every situation imaginable and then some. So I'd like maybe if you could share a time in your business or personal life where you hit a tough situation and how you got back on track. Yeah, I think... Um... You know, so many, right? So, so many. <laughs> I think that, you know, I had a big vision for my last company, Juicero, that I really believed that um, plants were good for people, that the U.S. dietary guidelines recommended 7 to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables every day. The average American was consuming less than one, mm -hmm. and that could be French fries or ketchup, wow. right? Mm -hmm. So- um, like in my life, um, I transform myself by eating whole foods, um, plant-based, fresh, ripe, raw, organic fruits and vegetables. And one of the key things for me was juice. Mm -hmm. So cold pressed, organic, green juice. It's low in calories. It's low in sugar. It's high in chlorophyll and it's high in micronutrients. So I really believed in that. And in the research that I did, I, most people who drank coffee, who had an espresso machine, were using that once or twice a day, whether it was a Keurig or an espresso machine. Mm -hmm. But people at a home juicer were using it once or twice a month, where the Keurig and espresso were once or twice a day. So I had this big vision to see how could I make it easier for people to consume fresh juice. And juice in a bottle is typically majority, like 99%, legally must be pasteurized if they make juice in a bottle. So I believed in freshness. I wanted fresh. So my concept was I would take fresh produce, triple wash it, dice it, slice it, chop it, shred it, prepare it to go into a juice press, and then invent the juice press so that people could literally in two minutes take the pack out of the refrigerator, put it in the machine, press one button and make juice. And that was like my, my vision. So fast forward three years later, I launched this company. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to people loving it on the majority, we had thousands of people loving it and they were using it exactly like what I thought, you know, 
twice a day, 9.2 times a week. We sold thousands of machines. Um, revenue grew to a million dollars a month. And then, you know, out of kind of craziness, the media um, said, oh, this was their narrative. Doug creates a $700 juicer for rich a-holes mm -hmm. and you don't need to use the machine at all because you could squeeze the pack uh, by hand. And of course you could squeeze the pack by hand. It was chopped and shredded produce and cheesecloth, but no one wanted to squeeze it by hand and which was indicated when we offered any person who bought the machine the ability to refund it if they didn't like it. And no one returned the machine, like less than 5% of people returned the machine. But bad narrative in the media meant I got fired um, and they shut the company down and sold the assets. So here I was, you know, um, someone whose heart was out there wanting to people to be healthier, got caught in Silicon Valley excess crossfire and, you know, had to think about, okay, what was I going to do? And what helped me along the way was that I knew that what I did was good. Mm -hmm. It was, it was really good. And I knew my intentions were very pure and authentic. Right. So, so I went to the desert and so I moved to the desert and originally just to be alone, right? I wanted to have my space. I didn't need to be in Silicon Valley or New York or LA. So I moved to the desert and in the desert, the first thing I discovered was that I was in a food desert, right? I'm not just in a desert, I'm in a food desert. And the only food around here was 7-Eleven, Circle K gas station, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing that I could eat in any of those places. And not only am I an environmentalist and not, I didn't want to be in the car for three hours mm -hmm. to drive to Palm Springs to go to the organic grocer. So I said, aha, I'm going to grow sprouts. So this was in the back of my mind. I had been sprouting on and off for 25 years, but sprouts were always a garnish in my life, right? So there was a, there was super food, but there were garnish. I would add them to a soup, add them to a salad, have them a sandwich. But now I, I said, can sprouts be the staple of my diet? right? Could they be an integral part of my lifestyle? And turns out within 30 days, most of my calories were coming from sprouts. It was fascinating, mind blowing that these little, these little seeds, mm -hmm. when you add water would grow into vegetables that you could eat that turns out were not only adequate nutrition, they were incredible levels of nutrition with multiple multiples of 20 to 50 times more nutritious than their mature vegetable counterparts. So that was like, whoa. So I'm still living modestly in the desert by myself. And now in one cubic foot, I'm growing most of my calories, most of my nutrition. And then I, I was concerned, like, I can't be the only one doing this. And turns out, like, there are some people sprouting, but no one was using it as a food source. And I said, there must be a reason why, huh. right? And I thought the reason why was maybe it wasn't good for you. Maybe it wasn't healthy. Maybe it was incomplete. And it turns out it was the opposite, that sprouts were super nutrition super levels of micronutrients, phytonutrients, polyphenols, bioflavonoids, prebiotics, probiotics, um, every essential amino acid to form complete high quality proteins. And I realized that we live in a convenience culture that in low income, people would just eat junk food. And in high income, they were suffering from the disease of affluence mm -hmm. and they were eating expensive junk food. They just didn't know it was junk food. So I said, I've got to get this message out to the world. And no college degree, 
basically I've just been um, a graphic designer and then I ran, you know, juice, juice things. And so I said, I'm, I got to write this book. I got to get this message out there. So I flew to New York. I had a meeting with one publisher, Macmillan, one of the largest publishers in the world, um, and their imprint, St. Martin's Press. Mm -hmm. And I pitched them the Sprout book. And I brought recipes made with sprouts. And I brought raw individual sprouts. And I was like on sprout fire, <laughs> right? On fire with sprouts. And the editor... Elizabeth Beyer was literally like eating sprouts out of the palm of my hand. And she said, let's do this. And now the book is in the sixth printing. Wow. It's, it's in the top 5,000 books of all books on Amazon. Um, it's selling every day. And I'm getting thousands of messages from around the world of people showing me their bounty, showing me their crops showing me their children sprouting, their spouses sprouting, them sprouting, feeding sprouts to their dogs. And I feel that my prior journey was the stepping stone to a bigger vision, a bigger mission. And, you know, I'm like, I, I think I'm on top of my game right now. Wow. That is incredible and so interesting. I think about when when this pandemic universal pause happened and we weren't sure if we were going to get food or not get food or the stores were going to close or what. And we thought, OK, let's try to grow food. And I bought all these hydroponic things and <laughs> and I thought, oh, my gosh, my daughter and I laughed and I said, well, I think we're going to starve. <laughs> it wasn't working out. <laughs> and we didn't think about sprouting anything. If only I had your book back then. <laughs> well, it, you know, Sheila, the interesting thing is, like, I love all those various technologies. The reality is most things that people grow take weeks, months yeah. or years. Sprouts take days. Exactly. Right. And when you can sprout food in days. And like, you know, these are um, soybean sprouts, mm -hmm. about three days old, growing their tails. You could see they're starting to get green and get their tails. Mm -hmm. These literally take some soybeans, put them in a jar, add some water, rinse them twice a day. And you've got a, the most nutritious form of soy that's living, sprouting, enzymatically rich, bioavailable, unprocessed for pennies a serving, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the mind boggling thing that you can buy seeds in bulk for low cost yeah. and get all these benefits. Oh, that's incredible. That's so smart. And I know, I know just from my own puppy dog, she likes my salads. She like, she like, isn't that weird? Like she eats the healthy food that I didn't even know dogs ate vegetables. My oh. dog eats my vegetables. She eats Good. broccoli. She, <laughs> it's like the weirdest thing. No, <laughs> More, I mean, it's normal. Are... It's yeah. normal. I mean, dogs are smart. Dogs are smart. And the thing is, dogs don't understand, you know, TV commercials, right? So they're not going to come and beg you to take them to some fast food restaurant, you know, where they've got yellow and red, you know, packaging right. and branding, right? The dogs want things that are real. Mm -hmm. You know, like dogs are innocent and tuned in. Yes. As, I mean, if we have a salad, whenever we, we try to have a salad every day, the dog will beg for the salad, anything in the salad. It's yeah. not kidding, which is like, I didn't even know. So, <laughs> well, that's a, the, the interesting thing is you can grow your own salads, right? When I make a salad, I'm adding, like, take a look at these. This is, um, these are lentils mm -hmm. that are sprouting and you could see the green that this is a one gallon like glass jar mm -hmm. that they use like in a restaurant, you know, for like pickles or something. And then I just put some cheesecloth on the top here with a rubber band mm -hmm. and I put the lentils in and the lentils grow into vegetables. So th th check this out. When you take a lentil, and you sprout a lentil in three days, 
you double the antioxidant levels, mm. you triple the vitamin C, and you quadruple the fiber. It's like, why, are, why isn't everyone eating sprouted lentils, right? Not to mention you're reducing the phytic acid and the lectins, and you're going through the biological transformation of taking the lentil from a, like a legume into a vegetable. And I think I mean, most people would agree that vegetables are good for you. That is incredible. Now, have you noticed um, with the people that have been sprouting based on your book, um, have they reported changes in their health or, uh, I don't know, did they go through food withdrawals or <laughs> what What was the difference in energy? What kind of... Oh, uh, I mean, look, I, I think that now, and, you know, and look, I realize, you know, this is our first time of really interacting, right, Sheila? So... I just want to say anything that I say, you should verify with whatever sources you want to use, right. fact checkers and the like, et cetera. I look at sprouts as three things. Number one, I look at them as food, right? Not just as like sprouts or garnish. I look at sprouts as food. Number two, I look at sprouts as vitamins and minerals. So as opposed to taking a multivitamin, I'm growing my own multivitamins that are rich in everything that I need, vitamins and minerals. So every benefit that exists in every vegetable exists in sprouts, right? So sprouts to me are vitamins, nutrition, mm -hmm. right? And number three, and this is research coming out of esteemed universities like Johns Hopkins and all around the world, that sprouts are medicine, that treating cancer, right? Cancer patients, post-op um, with sprouts and particularly cruciferous vegetables like broccoli. Broccoli sprouts have these anti-cancer healing compounds that actually can kill cancer cells. It doesn't cure cancer. So let's just be clear. It's not curing yeah. cancer, but people going through treatment, people that have cancer um, are getting positive reaction from the benefits of sprouting, the mm -hmm. research for autism, that there's something in the sulforaphane from broccoli sprouts that actually creates heat shock proteins in the brain of people who suffer with autism. And when they are getting that heat shock protein reaction, they are lessening their symptoms of autism. Wow. Holy cow. People that are overweight, right? Um, when they're eating sprouts, they're getting high levels of protein, high levels of fiber and low calories. So just think about that, that in the Weight Watcher system, um, their sprouts are zero points in the system. Mm -hmm. So you can pretty much go to town on sprouts. So the key and the secret is um, eating sprouts when you're hungry on an empty stomach because no one wants to eat sprouts after Ben and Jerry's, right? No one wants to eat sprouts after they're eating the Big Mac. Mm. But if you're hungry, you will eat the sprouts. And if you eat enough of the sprouts when you're hungry, your, your brain and your body biologically, psychologically, physically will become satiated. And then there will be no room to eat the other junk. Mm. So, so, the results that, that I'm getting, I mean, we're on like day, you know, we're the book launched April 7th. Um, so we're nine months into the book, mm -hmm. but I've got like the CEO of Spartan race who's training kids going into the Olympics and, mm -hmm. and getting me on the phone and getting those people on, on to sprouts, getting their, their parents onto sprouts. Um, so there's athletes, all sorts of people. Now, consuming sprouts, and I think that what, what people will get is they will get energy, they will get nourishment, and um, the, the leading um, gastroenterologist, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Will Bysowitz, right, the gut health MD, right, with, you know, over a quarter million followers on Instagram, New York Times bestselling book, 
um, is, is sprouting and recommending sprouting to his patients, to his followers. He included two chapters in his book, Fiber Fueled on Sprouts. So this is not, you know, just someone talking about sprouts. Like this is sprouts are the future of nutrition and they're low cost, they're fast to grow, they're highly accessible, highly nutritious and versatile in recipes. When I wrote the book, the sprout book, I was questioning how people are going to consume a lot of sprouts. So I hired and partnered with um, the, the author who created the recipes for Oprah Winfrey's cookbook, right? So, and I said to her, I said, I want to create 40 recipes with you that are 100% plant-based, that are all raw and that have massive copious amounts of sprouts in them. And so we put in recipes in the book. Nice. Like that goji almond bites mm. using sprouted almonds, medjool dates, shredded coconut, vanilla, a quarter cup sprouted sunflower seeds, and two tablespoons of cacao nibs. We've got the cilantro mint, mint chutney, you know, quarter cup of water, two tablespoons of lime juice, two cups of mature mung beans, two cups of fresh cilantro, mint leaves, quarter cup of cashew, medjool dates. I'm getting hungry just reading this thing. Um, crunchy sprout celery apple salad with golden tahini dressing, unfried kimchi rice, and a zuki sprout bowl. So basically making rice out of cauliflower and yeah. then using kimchi, which is a Korean fermented cabbage, and mm -hmm. then adding azuki sprouted beans. Avocado sprout boats with clover. Garam masala lentils with cauliflower rice. You know, the uh, quinoa tabbouleh, lemon cauliflower salad. I mean, it's unbelievable. You could have more than one different dish every day for a month mm -hmm. and pick the things that you like. Now, let me ask you, for those listening in who maybe are going from not so healthy or maybe they, they got the COVID 25 or plus or whatever, and now they're, they're like, okay, this sounds great. I want to add this in slowly or daily maybe as a garnish and then kind of ease into it, what would you suggest for people well, kind of look, starting out from zero? <laughs> I, I, think, I think that zero, look, I don't, I don't want people to be like me. I love and honor where people are in their journey, right? So what I want to say is add sprouts to your diet. Mm -hmm. Add sprouts to your diet. It's as easy to start as getting a mason jar with some cheesecloth and a rubber band and some organic sprouting seeds online. Uh, easy to find is Google organic sprouting seeds. And then easiest place to start, French lentils. They sprout in 24, 48 hours. You're in business and lentils are familiar. When you sprout them, they're just healthier. Mm -hmm. And then... You can still use whatever, you know, preferably better, but you can use whatever marinara sauce, pesto sauce, tahini sauce, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, add your sauces to it and they just become a filler. So you just mm -hmm. start adding them to whatever you're eating mm -hmm. and then know that you are consuming the healthiest food on the planet. Like eating sprouts is like connecting with primal plant intelligence. Every single seed, every single seed is a complete living organism in a dormant state. Mm -hmm. And you become the master controller, partner, representer of nature to add some water to activate and germinate that dormant seed and unleash that fire to turn it into a vegetable. Yes, that's incredible. Now, are you still doing juicing too in your diet, or is I, that I drink I drink wheatgrass juice mm -hmm. and I drink some sprout juice. Um, 
But for the most part, I don't have access to um, organic vegetables other than sprouts. So it's only what I can sprout here. I still love juicing, right? I, ju I love drinking spring water and I love juicing. Um, mm. The thing that I can juice here easily is wheatgrass juice because I can grow my own. Look at this. This is, um, I'm growing some wheatgrass here. Look at these. Wow. These are wheat, um, wheat, wheat berry and they're sprouting. Let me look at that. I see. And then you just juice those. Well, no, 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 no. These will grow. I take those, I put them on an unbleached paper towel mm -hmm. on a little like screen rack. And then I got a, a spray bottle and I'm spraying them a couple times a day and they'll grow to four inch tall blades of grass. Mm -hmm. Then I snip the grass and I throw them in the wheatgrass juicer. I see. Yes, that is very good. And that's like chlorophyll. Wheatgrass gives you a lot of chlorophyll. Is that chlorophyll, right? Chlorophyll, yeah, which is the energy of the sun. The, 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 the wheatgrass processes fo through photosynthesis the energy of the sun into that green, and that green is a powerful antioxidant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So good. And you don't take any supplements? No. No. Wow. And I'm 54 years old. And I feel better than I did when I got out of the army, you know, um, mm -hmm. whatever, like 35 years ago or some crazy number like that. Did you eat like everyday food back then? Oh, oh, back then. I mean, I remember like one of my last meals in New York City, me and my close friend, we were like in Chinatown and it was raining and we were so hungry. We went to this Chinese restaurant. And there was a line out the door. And by the time we got to the food, there was no seating, but up there, I said, well, let's just get to go. And we ordered a duck that was hanging in the window and the okay. guy was getting ready to chop it up. He said, no, just give us a duck. And we gave him $10. And then we go, we went and we're sitting on the stoop like cannibals, um, tearing apart the duck, eating the neck, eating the fat, eating the skin, chewing on the bone marrow. Oh, and boy. So, I mean, I was like a normal eater, I guess. Wow. <laughs> wow. So at some point, what was it that changed your idea of eating to go healthy? What, was there a, a point in your life? Where oh, you were yeah, definitely. I can remember very clearly. My aunt became overweight and then had diabetes. And then six months later, they chopped off her feet below her ankles. Oh, my goodness. And then my uncle got heart disease and died. Then my other uncle got heart disease and died. Mm. Then my aunt got IBS and colitis. And then ultimately my, my, my aunt and my mother both had stomach cancer and died. Oh. And then my father died of heart disease. And then my brother, who was my only two years older than me, became overweight, obese, diabetic, hypertension, atrial fibrillation, and had the first of three strokes and a heart attack. Oh my goodness. And I thought like, holy cow, I'm genetically cursed. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter what I do. Cause I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And then like I met someone who was eating the whole food plant-based diet and their sister died of leukemia. Their mother died of cancer. So we connected on that level. Mm -hmm. And she had said, I mean, she was healthy, beautiful, vibrant, physically fit. And she says, oh, Doug, it's not genetics. Mm -hmm. It is lifestyle that, you know, think about what, what your entire family had in common. They ate cooked food, processed food, refined food, meat, dairy, animal products, right? Bread, pizza, pasta, um, candy, soda, right? Mm -hmm. And and I said, yeah, well, like, what else are you going to eat? Like, that's what, you know, food was to me, right? right? And in a two week period in April, 1999, I went cold cucumber and I went from eating all that junk to vegetarian, vegan, and then mm -hmm. raw vegan. Wow. And I've been, I've been all vegan 100% for 21 years, 
but I've been raw vegan for probably the greater portion of 17 or 18 years. And I am right now 100% raw vegan. So do you do anything hot as far as like hot tea, hot? Occasionally like ceremonial tea, you know, at a, at a, at a more for social things, but um, herbal tea, green tea, mm -hmm. um, no sugar, no, um, no, no caffeine, no, no milk mm -hmm. or no processed things at all. So I you mean, what I, what I eat is I eat fruits, mm -hmm. I eat vegetables, I eat salads. I make my own dressing using tahini, um, avocados. I eat ferments. So we, we make our own sauerkrauts, you know, in the house. I also ferment some sprouts. We eat seaweed. Um, and like, that's what we do. And, mm -hmm. and I feel phenomenal. Wow. That's incredible. Do you do stevia and monk fruit or not even that? Is Unnecessary. I um, eat dates. I'll show you. I buy dates in uh -huh. 11 kilo boxes. So 22 pound big boxes of fresh local medjool dates, you know, from Palm Desert. Mm hmm. Wow, that's incredible. So your grocery bill must be extremely low. Very low. Overall. Really. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably consuming maybe $40, $50 a month in food. Incredible. And super healthy. Yeah, and look, I think that what happens is most people, myself included, were addicted or are addicted to fat, sugar, and salt. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you were to take raw broccoli and give it to anybody, right, if they're really hungry, they'll eat some of it. Right. You take that same raw broccoli and you saute it with oil, with salt, with sugar, with seasoning. People will be able to polish any amount of it away. They'll just be able to eat it. So there's something that happens with the dopamine and the serotonin in the brain and the flavor sensors to make you overeat. So if you do the simplest thing and you give up adding oils mm. and sugars, you know, and salts, then you'll, you, you won't over, you, it, it'll be very hard to overeat because the food will just be bland, right? Yeah. The food will just be bland. And, and there's no excitement when you're eating the bland food, there's just health. So mm. it's a long-term perspective um, to, to eat that way. But I have another success story. I was in Bali mm. in December 2018. And I'm under a waterfall. And, you know, there's like five people there. Three of them went together. There's one other guy. He was by himself. And we're walking back from the waterfall to the car. And he was a good 50 pounds overweight. And to me, I'm all love. So he's saying, what do you do? It's like X, he's a software guy from Silicon Valley and blah, blah, blah. And what do I do? I was like, I used to live in Silicon Valley and now I'm all about sprouts. I'm writing the sprout book. And I give him the five minute pitch on sprouts. Mm -hmm. We connect on Facebook. Next thing I know, he's doing 30 days of all sprouts, right? Two weeks into it, he runs a marathon. Wow. Just by eating sprouts. He has so much energy running the marathon. Mm. He runs home six more miles after the marathon. Two weeks later, he runs a 50 mile ultra marathon just eating sprouts. I called him up. I said, I interviewed him for my book. There's a, there's, he's, he's in my book, um, Stephen. And I said, did you cheat at all? He goes, sometimes I'd add some spicy Tabasco sauce or sriracha sauce, but no, otherwise I just ate sprouts. He grew some sprouts. He bought some sprouts. He just ate sprouts. So, I mean, you you talk about success stories, you know, extraordinary. Wow. That's incredible. That is. And that's something I, I feel like as a mother, I have six children. And as a mother, I think just being able to introduce the sprouts into the food and meals. <laughs> so all of a sudden the kids are like, this is just normal. This is what we eat. Yeah. And hey, Sheila, I'm totally up for having a conversation, you know, a family call you and the six kids 
and we'll talk about sprouts. We'll zoom in on my kitchen. We'll show them the sprouts. We'll answer all questions because if you look on my Instagram at Doug Evans, mm -hmm. you know, two different mothers sent me their pictures of their eight year old kids growing sprouts for their science project. Wow. Right. And just with joy, mm -hmm. you know, they're growing them, they're eating them, they're sharing them. I mean, you know, one, one, you know, young girl did like a sprout house and the other one did on the science project. And the, 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 the amazing thing, this, this young girl um, actually was experimenting with stressing the sprouts by growing them in a refrigerated environment, creating her own truly scientific hypotheses at eight years old mm. with sprouts being the medium. So look, I think this is for real. This is my mission. This is what I want to get out there. I yeah. am so grateful, you know, that you do that. But that was answering your question. That's how I rose myself from the bootstraps, right? Mm -hmm. I was down, right? There was a lot of shame in losing over a hundred million dollars, you know, mm -hmm. of investor capital, you know, people who left other jobs to come work at the company that believed in the vision and they had to, you know, go and, and, and find other things to do to support their families, the customers who believed we had thousands of customers. We had to say, send back your machine. You know, we're, 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 we're winding down the operation. So there was a lot of shame. And the thing was, I just did my best. Right. right. And I was very compassionate and very loving of myself to, to say, Hey, you know, identified mistakes are successes. And yeah. I taught a class at Harvard Business School, mm -hmm. right, on my blind spots of what I did. And that was very cathartic, especially when I went in there. These, you know, super young whippersnappers were extremely snarky, mm -hmm. condescending, and judgmental when I got there. Like, they thought, like, I was a snake oil salesman and mm -hmm. – but they listened, they asked questions and, you know, some discourse um, back and forth. But at the end, they're like, wow, what a journey. And I said, you can't learn these lessons. I'm teaching it here at the Harvard Business School, but you can't learn these lessons unless you are in the ring, unless you have to make a decision. Do you do this or do you do that? And do you fight about this or do you fight about that? Because you can't fight every battle. Right. You have to choose your battles. And so like you just do your best. And so I'm very kind to myself. And the number one thing I do for myself is I make sure I exercise mm -hmm. and I don't like to run. Let me just say it's much more fun to, you know, let the time go by on the phone than it is to run. But I get myself out there and I run 5K, 10K in the desert, you yeah. know, five days, six days a week. You know, whether it's cold, wet, dry, um, doesn't matter. Like I get out there and the, the hardest thing is getting the shoes on. Because mm -hmm. like I will stare at those running shoes. Yes. I'll stare at them for a long time till they go on. And once they're on, it's like they're electric. I'm going. Makes all the difference. That is so incredible and very inspiring. Well, Doug, I'd love for you to share um, where people can connect with you, how they can get your book. So um, my book is available wherever books are sold. I recommend you go to your local bookseller and tell them to special order the copy of The Sprout Book by Doug Evans. Um, you can sign up for my newsletter at um, www.thesproutbook.com. And I do most of my sharing today on Instagram. So in, and my, my handle is just Doug Evans, D O U G E V A N S. Um, so just Doug Evans and, um, send me your sprout successes, follow my stories. Um, I've done some of the top plant-based podcasts that you can listen to content. I did podcasts with the CEO of Spartan race. I did a podcast with Marianne Williamson about food poverty and food equality in mm -hmm. America. Um, so that's it. I'm out there and this is my mission and we're making it happen. Excellent. Thank you again for being a guest on the show. And for those tuning in, we'll be right back after these messages.
If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have some incredible things to share. Uh, I'm sharing about a special thing that's been around forever that I just really found out more about, and that is sprouting and growing microgreens and the benefits that this makes to our health. So I started doing this process every day, adding sprouts and microgreens to my diet since January 1st, 2023, and I am feeling more energized. It is just incredible. So I do have a very special guest coming on in a little bit, and his name is Doug Evans. You may have heard of him or seen him on TikTok and Instagram, all over the place, sharing about how he is growing sprouts and microgreens and living off of them. Now, I have actually just started adding a good handful to each breakfast, lunch, dinner, and that has made a huge difference. It also gives you an extra edge for recession, recession proofing because you are actually saving so much money growing your own sprouts and microgreens at home, freshest and best. So when I first started last week, actually, I purchased my microgreens and sprouts from uh, the grocery store, and it was like five, four, five, six dollars each, depending on what type of microgreen or sprouts. Uh, broccoli is supposed to be the best, and that got pretty old pretty quick, so I actually started growing at the same time and just have my first batch of fresh fresh grown sprouts uh, just seven days later um, that I've started to eat already. So that is some pretty cool stuff. So we will get more into that. And thank you again for tuning in. If you are new to the show, you may find my show on YouTube, and I'd love for you to help me out and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just look up Sheila Mack Show. All the shows that I record here on NBC KCAA also go to many different channels internationally. They go to all the podcasting channels and also to my YouTube channel for future reference. And that is Sheila Mack Show on YouTube. I would love it if you would subscribe and share. So there are surprising benefits of sprouts and microgreens. They help you boost productivity. They give you energy and focus with nutrient packed little powerhouses. It is kind of incredible. So this is Superfoods for Success podcast focus today. We are going to explore the most nutritious and energizing foods to help you reach your full potential. So in today's episode, we will be talking about sprouts and microgreens, those tiny nutrient-packed plants that pack a big punch when it comes to boosting productivity, energy, and focus. You might be thinking, sprouts, really? Aren't they just those little things that you see at the salad bar that no one even eats? But trust me, this is some wild stuff. I mean, the energy is incredible. So sprouts are so much more than just a garnish. In fact, they are some of the most nutritionally dense foods on our planet, packed with antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and essential amino acids. So if you are plant-based, uh, or vegan plant-based on that diet, uh, certain sprouts give you all the amino acids and all the protein that you need, which is pretty incredible. What makes sprouts so special? Well, for starters, they are super easy to grow. In fact, I like have trouble growing things and this was incredibly easy. All you need is a jar, some water, and a few seeds and you can have a batch of fresh spouts in just a few days so really it's like five to seven days um, for me and you do have to rinse um, soak and rinse and let sit for 12 hours and then each day you rinse uh, twice a day as they grow so that's super important and there's 
lots of videos on YouTube and, and Doug Evans, our um, special guest today, will be sharing more about the process as well. So it is important to use purified water, the best, freshest water you can get. Uh, I have a Kanjan water purifier at home, so I use that to make sure that the plants have clean, clean water and rinse out daily. This is really important for safety purposes uh, because if you let those sprouts sit and the water is not cleaned out, then you could get mold or um, different types of bacteria can grow in the sprouts while you're growing them. So this is really like vital. Uh, anyway, so you might be thinking, really, sprouts? Uh, so yeah, it has made such a difference in my energy levels, my sleep, uh, even my workouts have been far better. And all I've added is about a handful. Oh, you like, uh, I had a nice little vegetable omelet this morning and I added a handful of sprouts. Then for lunch, I'll have some sprouts mixed in with my regular green salad. And for dinner, I'll add it maybe as a garnish to my soup. And that's about it. And for me, that's that's just been incredible. The difference is night and day. The real benefits of sprouts and microgreens comes from the fact that they are jam-packed with nutrients. For example, alfalfa sprouts are rich in antioxidants, which can help protect your body from free radicals and reduce the risk of chronic, chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. Mung bean sprouts on the other hand, are loaded with protein, making them a great plant-based source of these essential nutrients, which is pretty cool. So how can you have sprouts help boost your productivity, energy, and focus? They all come down to the nutrients that they provide. For example, the high levels of vitamins and minerals in sprouts can help your brain function, leading to improved concentration and focus. And because sprouts are so low in calories and high in fiber, they can also help you feel full and satisfied, which can also lead to improved energy levels throughout the day. In short, sprouts are simple and tasty and a great way to boost that productivity, energy, and focus for work and play. I started adding them and then my, my, uh, Kids started adding them to their foods as well because, you know, they follow what we do, not what we tell them to do. As far as our kids or grandkids go, that is for sure. So I have, they love them. I mean, <laughs> it's just interesting because it's almost like when I first started eating these sprouts and microgreens, my body just craved more. Like I just, there was something in them that really was helping me for sure. And the kids really like them too, which you would never think they would. So next time you're looking for a quick and easy way to give your body a nutrient boost, consider adding some sprouts or microgreens to your diet. Your body and your brain will thank you. So some of the, here are 10 benefits of the microgreens. And one of the things, if you look into broccoli sprouts, they have something in them that is really powerful for just really giving you energy. So that's something else that I have been eating a lot of the broccoli sprouts and microgreens, as well as all the other types. So they are high in nutrition. Microgreens and sprouts are jam-packed with nutrients, including antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and essential amino acids. They are low in calorie, so both microgreens and sprouts are the lowest in calorie, making them an excellent choice for those looking to maintain a healthy weight. Um, I am following an incredible diet called uh, Nutritional Fitness, and I just interviewed the CEO of that company who is a cellular biologist. So I have been following this program and going down on my sizes and feeling more energized and healthier. And yes, microgreens and sprouts are definitely allowed on this diet. So it has gone really well hand in hand with the program that I have been following. Uh, and it, I've been following this program for about six months and have had some great changes in health, off all medications, energized. And uh, again, for me, weight loss has been 
uh, part of the process, which has been incredible with less effort. So uh, I just started adding these new microgreens and sprouts into my life. And, you know, it saves a lot of money as uh, we're talking about recession proofing and uh, these interesting times just to be able to grow some fresh greens at home to add to your salads, to add as a garnish or to have as a full meal. And it really, when they're this packed with nutri nutrition, and I'm telling you, this is crazy. You just need two tablespoons of the seeds to sprout in the jar and you get like four or five cups of sprouts. It is wild. And so this, this would last you, depending if you're eating, uh, you know, every day, if you're eating as a full sprout salad or if you're just using as a garnish, you can really save a lot of money adding these sprouts and microgreens to your diet. Not only that, but it benefits your health, which saves tons of money on medications and this and that. We won't even go there, but you know what I'm talking about. So that is something to think about. And it, I mean, it, it costs pennies a day to have your sprouts and the way I've, this is like my first week of growing my own because the cost savings are incredible and it's fresher. So growing at home is fresher. And so one of the things that's really um, kind of easy to do is you just start a new batch each day, five days a week or seven days. And then seven days later, your first batch is done or five days, depending on what you're growing. And then you just rotate. And so each day you'll have a fresh jar. If you're like, we're eating a, at least a jar and then um, about a tray of microgreens, but I have a large family. Um, and so that, that's what's going on at the Mac Shack <laughs> and we are loving it. So, I, I mean, we're talking about 25 cents or so for each two, you know, five cups of microgreens. So that is pretty incredible. They are high in fiber. Both microgreens and sprouts are high in fiber, which can help you feel full and satisfied, leading to improved energy levels throughout the day. Easy to grow, again. Both microgreens and sprouts are easy to grow at home, allowing you to have a cons constant supply of rich, nutrient-dense foods on a budget, just about any budget this can fit into. And actually the seeds, uh, I, I do get the highest quality organic uh, seeds that I can find. And the little bit extra is worth it to me because it still comes down to about 25 cents for four or five cups of greens. So that is not bad. Uh, they're versatile. Microgreens and sprouts can be added to all kinds of dishes, salads, sandwiches, smoothies, and more, or eat, eaten as a main meal, which Doug, uh, when he comes on the air in a little bit, you will hear more about how he has really switched primarily to just sprouts and microgreens. They can improve your brain function. The high levels of vitamins and minerals in microgreens and sprouts can help support your brain function, leading to improved focus and concentration. And I confess, I am somebody that I probably do have a little bit of that ADD or ADHD, or I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, I don't really take anything but vitamins to help. And I have noticed a huge improvement improvement in my focus and concentration and I'm I'm one of those that gets hyper focused so I can actually get a lot of work done and when I'm focused on a project helping a client I am super zoned in and tuned in to what my clients need and that has brought me a lot of success and this eating these microgreens and sprouts has actually helped me focus even better now, it does boost your immu immune system. The nutrients in microgreens and sprouts can help boost the immune system, helping you stay healthy and productive. And this is a season. I have had a lot of friends come down with a flu or a cold or a cough or this or that. And 
I have been very grateful. I'm knocking on wood right now. Uh, I do go to the gym every day. I go out and see people <laughs> on a regular basis and travel uh, flying to and from a couple different states regularly. And I have been well so far. Uh, I do do my best to use, I don't know what you want to call it, but you know, like cleanliness, wash your hands, wash your face, whatever. Um, and I wipe off at the gym. Of course, I have some really nice gyms that I go to, but it really, it's just made a difference, I think, because I've been very lucky. Um, and my family has also, nobody has had an issue um, with any kind of anything so far this cold and flu season. So knock on wood. <laughs> and we've all traveled a lot recently, so that's kind of cool. Um, now, it does help support healthy digestion. The fiber in the microgreens and sprouts can help support healthy digestion, leading to improved energy levels and overall well-being. And they, it also has like this natural probiotic, prebiotic quality, completely natural. So it's going to help you digest your foods as well uh, if you're using as a garnish. So if you're at a certain point, um, there's a certain time where a lot of people start taking these digestive enzymes to help digest or avoid problems. And I haven't really needed to take anything. The microgreens have really helped me though. I've noticed that uh, a big difference in that. So in just digestion and feeling full faster. So that's, that's pretty cool. They are known microgreens and sprouts are known to reduce the risk of chronic diseases. So the antioxidants in the microgreens and sprouts can help reduce the risk of chronic chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. Now, really, you got to look up the cancer fighting qualities of your broccoli sprouts because that's that's pretty mind blowing. I just um, learned all about that, and that's pretty cool. Now, convenient, both microgreens and sprouts are easy to store and transport, making them a convenient choice for busy individuals on the go. So um, my kids go to work, they go to school, and they literally pack salads. I have, <laughs> I know this is, I never told them to do this. They do this on their own, but they do pack a healthy salad for lunch or a snack. Um, because they all have full days out working and in school. And so they pack their own lunches many times and they're saving some money, but they're also eating really clean food that's natural, organic, and very healthy. So that just makes a difference. And again, it's, it's really, if you're a parent listening in, it's what you're the leader of your home, of your family, mom or dad, or whoever, grandma, grandpa, whoever's, you know, in charge or um, raising your kids, uh, children in your life, you're going to model and they're going to follow. If you're a teacher, um, when I was teaching, I had the blessing and opportunity to work as a Montessori teacher years ago and then as a Waldorf teacher. And both those schools, we, we brought our own lunches and the children brought their own lunches. Tune in again right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. The life has knocked you down. Pick yourself up with Bootstraps and Bra Straps. Get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today.